Let's look at an engineering problem. Here you see an inverted pendulum on a cart. The cart can move horizontally by horizontal force indicated by the arrow. There are two goals in this case. We want the pendulum to be in an upright position and we want the cart to be in a desired position. Here you see a PowerSim Studio model of the inverted pendulum and the cart. This model has four stocks. Here is a stock for the angle. And here is a red arrow indicating the position of the angle. And you see here with this starting position, if there is no control, it will fall to the ground. Here is the stock for the position. And this position is compared to the desired position. And down here is a slider which shows how the cart is moving back and forth. Initially it starts in the position 0, which is also the desired position. When optimizing, it's important to minimize the deviations from the goals. And here you see the stock for the accumulated costs. And the costs in each time step depends on the dif difference between the current angle and the upright position, which is 0. And it's, we also add the deviation from the desired position. And this accumulates over time and becomes the criterion. From optimization theory, we know that the optimal control of this system is a feedback policy where all four stocks influence the force. The force is modeled by a special function that SOPS, the optimization software, understands. In this case, we use a function called SOPS custom policy, which is a linear policy of all the different stocks. This is a simplification but we'll see how well this policy will work. Now we need parameter values to put weight on the four different stocks. For the angle, we have assumed 100. That means we have a negative or a balancing feedback loop that is dominating the reinforcing loop that tries to bring the pendulum to the ground. So we can guess at that from our a priori information about the loops, feedback loops of the system. Uh, let's assume nothing about the feedback from the angle velocity, nor from the velocity of the cart. But for the position of the cart, we'll just assume a, a minus 2 effect, uh, so that uh, we have some effect of the deviation from uh, desired position. So then we are ready to see how well this policy that we guessed at works in this system. So we simulate the model with this policy. And you notice that it starts oscillating and the oscillations become larger and larger. And we see the cart here is moving back and forth. And it doesn't work very well and there it fell to the ground. So let's see now if we can find a better policy by use of SOPS. And then we move over to the left hand side here, right click on simulation 1 here and choose optimize with SOPS. Then we get this option here and we first click build. And what this is doing is to create a C++ version of the PowerSim Studio model and that was successful. And then we click on test build module which tests to see if the C++ model gives the same simulated result as the original PowerSim Studio model. So we test it and it goes through the same simulation that we just saw. And it takes some time because PowerSim Studio is a bit slow when the, um, when the simulation interval, the time step, is very short as it has to be in this case. So then we are ready to move on to SOPS. So we click continue. And then SOPS appears in this window. And now we have to set a few parameters in order to be able to optimize. 
first we choose to start we'll test with 10 different starting points just in case we do not find the optimal solution in the first case we will choose the gradient method which is faster than this uh, more robust method we will not use Monte Carlo simulations because there is no uncertainty in this case and we choose a little longer time interval so that the model can come to an equilibrium with a good policy then we choose the next window which is assumptions and here we can set initial values you can change parameter values now in this case we will look at the angle and we want to set the initial value for the angle it's not a random variable so we choose fixed value and earlier it was uh, 1 now we'll choose a somewhat smaller deviation to begin with to, to increase the probability of finding a solution then we'll skip the grid policy and move on to the custom policy and uh, here we see the initial values that we used in the simulation model and here we can choose the variation so that for each time we make a new search we get new variables drawn randomly with this standard deviation so let's choose a fairly large standard deviation so that we get a good variation in, in the initial uh, values or the parameters for the control rule and make sure that all these are clicked so that they will be part of the optimization then we choose the criterion and in this case we choose the accumulated cost we can set the accuracy of the optimization and then we are ready to optimize so let's click on optimize and here we see the first search going on then simulations number iterations and the criterion value and here appears the first criterion value for the first iteration and down here we see the values of the parameters in the optimal strategy and we see that this is a little higher than the 100 we started with this is different from 0 this is minus 9, it was minus 2 to begin with and this is around 15 so we get values that differ quite a bit from the initial values and while I've been talking you see that the number of iterations have approached 10 and there we are you have 10 different results we can look at all 10 here and we see that the criterion values around minus 0.007 in most cases but there are a few cases here where, where a solution has not been found or a good solution has not been found so what we can do here is to go in and s select a cutoff point let's, let's select minus 0 0.0071 and then we have only five selected cases and they are all look very good we can choose here to see the standard deviation the criterion value we see is to 10 to the minus fifth and here we see the variation in the parameter values and there are there are quite small variations in the parameters so we have found a solution that is quite precise now we can take these values for the parameters and plug them into this uh, PowerSim Studio model again and see how the model works now now I have entered the parameter values in the PowerSim Studio model and we see here it's 131 here it's 26 as we found and let's see what happens now we start with an initial angle uh, of 0.2 and let's see what happens when we simulate and what we see here is that it goes quickly uh, to zero and stabilizes there now a question is will this also happen if we start with the initial value that we had before an angle of one so let's see what happens now aha so that didn't work very well and the reason for that is that this is a non-linear system and the parameter values must be adjusted 
according to how large deviations from zero that one expects. So now I have also run another optimization where we start with an initial value of 1 and found new primary values and I will now install or put in those new values. So the first one here is 90 and then I'll go on The next one I've set to 12, this one to minus 3, and the last one here to 5.9. So let's simulate now and see what happens. The control mechanism is somewhat more careful and we see that it goes nicely towards the goal. And we say it takes a little longer before the cart moves back to its position. So now it works very well. To conclude, we see that we didn't have to linearize the model in order to find an optimal solution as one has to do in most engineering methods. There is no complex math in connection with the optimization. It's sufficient that one knows and understands the simulation model that one starts with. And we even saw that the policy can be adjusted for how large deviations one expects from the goal. And that reflects the nonlinearities of the system. And that's very difficult to capture in, in other methods. <laughs>